Hello everybody, today I'm going to share with you this MacBook Pro early 2011 and we'll see how well it holds up here in 2017. Now believe it or not, this machine is actually my daily driver. I use it for everything from video editing to surfing the web to even writing a paper. I also take it everywhere with me from traveling to class to even here at home I use it as well. This was also my first ever MacBook. I remember saving up for it back in 2011 and watching the keynote on February 24th of 2011 where Steve Jobs introduced this MacBook Pro. Now this thing was quite interesting because the 2010 model before it of the 13 inch actually still had a Core 2 Duo processor in it. So this was the first 13 inch MacBook Pro to have an i-series processor standard. I thought that was great. So I went ahead and later that evening ordered this machine. With a couple tweaks, I decided to upgrade the original 320 gigabyte hard drive, which was stock, to a 500 gigabyte hard drive, and that was about it. That was the only little upgrade I did at the time, because I thought the smaller hard drive would just be too small for the ideas that I wanted to use this machine for at the time. So, ever since I received it on March 1st of 2011, I've used it ever since. Now, of course, it's not in its same configuration when I first bought it. I've done many upgrades to this machine to keep it speedy throughout the years, and we'll go over those as well. So what about the specs of this machine? This is the 13-inch version of the second-generation MacBook Pro, and being a early 2011 model, this machine has the Intel Core i5 processor inside of it, running at 2.3 GHz. It has currently 16 gigabytes of RAM, which is the max amount that it can handle. Originally, it had only four gigabytes of RAM, and I didn't upgrade it at the time of purchase because I didn't really need all that RAM at the time. Also, I have upgraded the original 500 gigabyte hard drive to a 525 gigabyte Crucial MX300 uh, SSD. I've also enabled all the correct uh, stuff for it, including trim, so that it can take full advantage of the SSD that is installed in this machine. And boy does this thing scream when it has an SSD compared to its original spinning hard drive. So, I have integrated graphics inside of this machine, part of the i5 processor. They're Intel HD 3000 graphics, and if you have less than 8 gigabytes of RAM, it'll only use 384 megabytes of shared video memory. However, if you have 8 gigabytes or more of RAM, which this one has 16, you can then use 512 megabytes of video memory. Additionally, the early 2011 MacBook Pros were the first to have Thunderbolt ports on them and SATA 3. So, let's go ahead and take a look around. On the left-hand side of the machine, we will find our ports. Going from left to right, we have our MagSafe power adapter port, which is of course for charging the machine. Next to that, we have our Ethernet port, FireWire 800, Thunderbolt 1, two USB 2.0 ports, our SD card slot, and headphone or audio out. At the far right, we will find our battery indicator, which when pushed, will show us the current status of the charged battery inside of the machine. On the right hand side of the machine, we will find our Kensington lock port, in addition to our super drive. On the back of the machine, we will find nothing but ventilation. On the front of the left hand side of the machine, we will find nothing. In the center, we will find an area so you can open the screen. And on the right hand side, we will find our sleep wake status light in addition to our IR receiver. Opening the machine up, we will find our 13.3 inch 1280 by 800 resolution display in the glossy finish. Above that, in the center, we will find our FaceTime HD camera, good for 720p video recording. This is also the first MacBook slash MacBook Pro to have the HD FaceTime camera. On the right hand side, we will find a status indicator light, which glows green when the camera is in use, and on the left hand side we will find a little sensor for sensing light in the room. On the bottom we will find the MacBook Pro logo. 
Below the screen, we will find our backlit keyboard, and below that, we will find our multi-touch trackpad. On the upper left-hand corner, we will find a small microphone, and in the other upper right-hand corner, we will find the power button. Here's a quick example of the backlit keyboard. This is at about a low to medium setting. If you'd like to adjust it, all you have to do is hit the keys on the keyboard. You'll get a little visualization on the screen. You can raise it all the way up, or you can bring it all the way down and turn it all the way off. On the bottom of the machine, we will just find some screws for opening the bottom cover and accessing the parts inside, such as the RAM, hard drive, and battery, which are all replaceable. If interested, underneath the sticky note are just some product keys. So, let's go ahead and see how well this machine runs. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn this thing on. Here we go. Of course, you may notice these little checkerboard lines on the screen. That's not there in real life. As you may notice, it's the camera trying to focus on the screen. It has a hard time. But as you notice, this thing boots incredibly fast way faster than it ever did with a spinning hard drive. So, let's go right ahead and take a look at about this Mac here. We can see we're running Mac OS Sierra, and this machine is eligible for the Mac OS High Sierra, which will be coming out later this year, which is 10.13. Of course, Mac OS Sierra is 10.12 and currently on version 5. So, it's nice that it'll definitely be upgraded for probably a couple more years to come. Most certainly, probably because it still has a uh, Thunderbolt port on it. As previously mentioned, this is the first MacBook Pro line, the early 2011 models, to have the Thunderbolt port on it. So, we have our little specs here that we've gone over earlier in the video. We can see our built-in display in addition to any other external displays that may be connected at the time. We have our storage, which macOS Sierra uh, usually takes a little time to calculate, and then you can go over here and click Manage, and if you have a hard drive that gets full all the time, um, you can manage that and do something about it. Of course, another nice feature with this machine is that it still has a super drive, which I definitely still use from time to time. It does come in handy. We can see our current memory configuration, in addition to support as well, and a service. So, this machine runs fantastic, or else it wouldn't be my daily driver. Let's go ahead and just take a brief look at Safari here. Of course, Firefox and Chrome are up to date on this machine as well, and definitely will be for quite a long time to come. I also use Opera from time to time, just for something different to use. I blacked out some of the things at the bottom there just because they're links that I use quite often for college and they just get quite annoying. Anyway, here we are at one of the lighting sites. We can see it loads just fine, it's really snappy. You can do whatever you want with this, it works great. Uh, I'd show you YouTube but there's nothing really different there. It runs amazing. It'll run at 720p HD most of the time. Um, sometimes it'll down itself to 480p depending on if other people are using the internet as well. If this machine is hooked up to a 1080p display, it will do 1080p, and sometimes it'll even try to do um, resolutions higher than 1080p, but I'll just reset it down to 1080 because I'm not a big fan of anything higher than that. How good can your eyes see anyway? So, of course, this is not a Retina MacBook Pro, and I don't really have any need for that anyway. This thing works fantastic for everything I want to do with it. So here's a quick little look at the internet. Of course, anything that you want to do on the internet runs just fine on this machine. Of course, we have Opera as well. I have Photoshop Elements on here, which is a stripped-down version of Photoshop. I put it on because sometimes I um, will do Photoshop on here, but most of the time I'll do Photoshop on my Mac Pro because it has the 23-inch uh, cinema display which is a lot nicer uh, to work on and more screen real estate as well. 
course you have iTunes, which is up to date. And I use Office 2016 here for college. Of course, it comes with PowerPoint and OneNote as well, but uh, of course you have Word, Excel, and Outlook. Let's go ahead and just open up Word here. It still takes a little bit of time to load, but it's very fast. And we're up and done. So we'll go ahead and quit out of that. Of course, Excel doesn't take long either. It fires right up. Of course, it wants me to check for updates. I don't have it do it automatically because it gets quite annoying when you're trying to work on stuff. So we can go ahead and look at some other applications I have on this machine that I use. And I do use this machine for video editing to this very day. Uh, I sometimes will use my Mac Pro and even my uh, iMac here. But most of the time I'll still use this machine if I'm on the go. All these applications you see here run perfectly fine. Um, let's see. Minecraft runs just fine on this machine. I play it all the time on here. Um, Roblox is something that my cousin's kids like to play. Of course, this looks like the older version. I don't think they've played it on here in a little while. But uh, all these applications run just fine. Everything's up to date. Not a problem anywhere. This thing is snappy. I'd highly recommend it to anybody looking for a brand new Mac. Anything uh, 2011 and newer, go for it. There's nothing wrong with any of it. You might need to do a little upgrade to the RAM and SSD instead of a spinning drive, but nothing wrong there. This machine is a beast in my eyes. It works fantastic for everything I want to do with it. So anyway, I really do hope you enjoyed this review of my beloved MacBook Pro early 2011. Also please comment, rate, and subscribe, and thank you very much for watching.